You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is a by american history podcast where each week i dave anthony read a story from american history to my friend uh, gareth reynolds who has no idea what the topic is going to be about back to you at the intro dave you do though huh you know what the topic is let's do it again you're listening uh, uh, gareth listen. reynolds who this time is in the second part of a topic he didn't know in the first part but since it's a two-parter, now knows what the topic is going to be about. Why are you holding your ear? Uh, so I can keep uh, contact with the studio while I'm also conducting the show with you, Dave. When's the last time you saw someone holding their ear when they were... Thanks, Charlie. That's right. Back to you guys. Yep. Go ahead, Dave. That hasn't happened since, like, the 80s. Like, nobody... More at 11 tonight. We'll see you there again. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Uh, so are you time traveling? I'm doing the show. I'm p completely present. You're holding your ears. And there's talk of flurries. The ice, the, the, the shake? The <laughs> McDonald's drink, because that's the <laughs> only kind we're going to get. We will have a, a time where people will only know flurries <laughs> from the McDonald's drink. They'll be like, what's a flurry? What's a McFlurry? Be like, well, it was based on this thing. Remember oh. White Rain? <laughs> we laugh because so many people are going to die. Back to you guys <laughs> in the studio. Sorry about that. Dave Anthony got negative. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on. What the fuck? This is where you play the intro. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> My room's a flame. Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> no. We're back. Great. How are you? <laughs> we don't need to catch up. We just did an episode. So, Stop with the sup stuff. Oh, Dave, we've got some shows to talk about. That's right, everybody. We make our tour return this Thursday. Uh, sorry, Tuesday, September 14th, we will be at Wise Guys in Las Vegas. Then on the 16th, we will be at Wise Guys in Salt Lake City. And then uh, we are at the Paramount Theater in Denver for the High Plains Comedy Festival. That is uh, Saturday, September 18th. Join us there. That'll be a great time. September 22nd, uh, we will be in Phoenix, but there's no ticket link, so just get ready. Uh, then we'll be in San Francisco November 5th. Saturday, November 6th, we'll be in Sacramento. December 10th, we will be in uh, San Diego. And then Australia, we will be there in 2021 uh, from October to... Who knows? We're not sure. But go to dollopodcast.com for all the information there and join us for some live shows. And then I will be at CB Live in Phoenix, Arizona, August 5th. That's me, Gareth Reynolds. I will be at uh, the Rally Improv, August 6th through the 8th. I will be at Hyenas, August 19th in Dallas. I'll be at the State Theater in Austin, Texas, August 20th. I'll be at the Rec Room in Houston, Texas, August 21st. Spokane Comedy Club, Spokane, Washington, August 26th, 27th. Tacoma Comedy Club, also in Washington. Go to GarethReynolds.com for all the information. Have you just been flipping me off the whole time? That's why I don't like doing the camera stuff. You get like, you're like, you're not focused. You should be focused on the dates that I say. I'm a pro. You are a pro. I can't fight you there. You're a pro. I'm a pro professional. How are you now? What are you gonna do? Do you shout a date for these? Fuck! I just thought of that. Um, you know what? I should shout the date. Let me yeah. look it up really quick. Uh, well, what am why I don't supposed delay, to do? Delay, delay, delay. Oh, oh, van. Delay. Okay, you got it. <clears throat> hey, everyone uh, at the show from the Dollop Show that you're listening to. Uh, just before we jumped in, I wanted to address something that I think is really important. Uh -huh. uh, and it's a topic that we really find crucial here at the Dollop. Uh -huh. um, well, uh, the, will, we, we're very curious if Go. waiters and waitresses will be singing happy birthday when things are kind of opened up. I mean, obviously, Corona's now kind of rearing its ugly head again, and it's summer. These numbers shouldn't be that high. <laughs> but uh, if you're at a Friday's and you need to get the birthday song saying to you, are you going to get it? 
Will they be wearing masks? And why why come they never sing the regular birthday song? Oh, gosh. Well, that's uh, something we needed to get opened up here at the show. And thank God we did. And uh, that'll be everything. That's all we wanted to talk about. Jesus Christ, dude, you're screwing me in the fucking mouth here. I think I got it. Um, So, yeah, we're hopeful they have closure on that soon. So, hey, find us on social media. Uh, I'm at Reynolds Gareth. Dave's at uh, Big Shit. And uh, and then um, let us know your thoughts. I'm not going to be a big shit. Nobody's going to know. It's called boomers. Nobody's going to know that that wasn't meant to happen like that. July 24th, 1978. Whoa. Billy Martin... Fired, mm-hmm. uh, disgrace from the Yankees. Uh, George Steinbrenner after winning the World Series, but getting drunk and saying shit and and George Steinbrenner getting multiple death threats. Death threats. People saying they never go to the game. Y- Yankees, ex Yankees coming out and saying they never right. never step foot in Yankee Stadium again. People burning tickets outside the stadium. It's fucking mayhem. Right. The next game. After he's fired. It's a home game. And oh, it was the, still in season. I forgot. Yeah, that. yeah. Okay, it's in right, season. Right. And um, fans chant, we want Billy for 20 straight minutes. Jesus Christ. That is... The ability sometimes for fans... Like, the, this, like the person who's always trying to lead the wave at the games. Like, there's just certain... You're just sometimes really impressed by the energy of the lunatic fan. Yes, 100%. <laughs> you know. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, Reggie didn't play that game, and I assume it's because they didn't. They thought yeah. he'd get booed. Healthy scratch. Yeah, healthy scratch. Mantle Ford and other Yankees from the 50s team said they'd never go to the stadium. Billy and George have a meeting, so he calls after a f- there's like three or four days go by, and it's like you, it's you like can crazy. just tell that George Steinbrenner is crazy because y- if you're gonna make that move, you have to be so sure that that is going to work out for you in some yeah. way to be on the phone a few days later just like that you know yeah shows that you, hey hey so maybe like it's a big whoopsie yeah it's a big whoopsie that's a big whoopsie back to you at the studio <laughs> uh george tells billy the yankees aren't the yankees without him and 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 it, okay so this is so billy he probably wants had like tears streaming down his yeah. face while oh, he yeah. got a boner yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just like a lot. It was just like, well, everything's good right now. You said that like that's not normal. Like, no, I well, do that. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, no, I know. but That's uh, how I do it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so this is, George says he wants him back if he agrees to only drink beer. What? <laughs> what, 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 what a world. What a war! It is. It's like the ver- the idea of sobriety was like, it wasn't a thing. It was just like. Do you remember the ads? The uh, the I only drink beer ads? No. Okay, so I I went online and tried to find them, but I what? I really remember these around this time. They had a uh there were all these ads on like please stop being such an alcoholic, but they they were basically public service yes. because people because drinking so much. And and there was one where the guy was like uh you know, I was I was drinking two or three six packs a day and just thinking, "What? It's just beer?" And that was the ad was like, hey, beer's alcohol also. Like it was the craziest fucking reminding people that like, hey, you know, if if you drink a ton of beer, then it's like liquor. <laughs> Numbers wise. <laughs> no, no, hear me out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, even as we've heard in the first part, like the ubiquity of alcoholism. Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah, it just It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so he hires Billy right there. What the fuck? So fun? hires him what back. What a weirdo. It's five days later. Um, but he doesn't tell the GM this. What, what a weird, what is, like, that's why you don't want to work for these kind of <laughs> owners. You know what I mean? Like, you did what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I hired your coach back, but I didn't tell the GM. So things are pretty bad. And they've already hired another manager. So there's a guy... That they immediately hired, I think his name's Bob Lemon. You got to treat it like a mistress manager, like we were talking about before, you know? Don't let him know. That's well, okay, you ready? No. So the GM, he tells, so George tells the GM, and GM's like, well, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's like getting married while you're married. It's like, dude, you can't. We just hired a guy. He hasn't done anything wrong. I know. 
I messed up in some way. I agree. No, but we can't. What? Like, then you can't fire that guy because people are like, what are you doing to well, that guy? I can't guy? fire Billy. I just hired Billy. You shouldn't have hired Billy. I you agree, just... but we are where we are. I got to fire. What am I going to do? Oh. <gasps> Don't say. We combine them into one person, <laughs> and, oh, and they'll I, share a bot. I thought you were going to say oh, co-manage. <laughs> oh, great, co-manage. That's even better. That's less no, it's science. it's terrible. Well, it's. But I'll tell you what. I don't know how we're going to get them to share a body. Your plan, at least, like, is tethered to reality in some capacity. No, just don't. He doesn't come back to manage. All right, we should dig up a body. <laughs> so. Are we same paging? No. Okay, different paging. So the GM is like, look. We keep the guy we just hired until 1980, and then we bring Billy back. So we announce him now. Announce and then Billy? Say he'll be the new manager in 1980. So a year and a half away. What? He'll take over the team. What? Then everything is resolved, because the guy gets to keep his job for a little while, and Bill, yeah, Billy's Yeah, feel comfortable back. knowing that he's <laughs> coaching for a season and a half or whatever. Can you, I can't No, even... <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to think of like, like they've got, they've had air appearance like very clearly, and but... But you're never like, that's right, he's got another season and a half. <laughs> and then he's done. And he's like, what? It's like, yep. No matter how good we are, what state the franchise is in, he's out of here. We got a new guy coming in. We're planning ahead oddly now. So they all agree to this. They're all like, great idea. Great. Okay, well, it's nice that we came to the meet each other in the middle on this. Total side thing, but the current manager called everyone meet. Called everyone meat. So he would walk through the dug and be like, hey, how's it going there, meat? Hey, nice hit, meat. Uh, Dave, I feel physically ill. <laughs> I mean, a guy uh, just flippantly calling, addressing you as meat? <laughs> hey, come on over here. I want to talk to you, meat. Me? I'd be like, I'd be like buddy, if you say meat again, I'm literally going to throw up. But the fact that that was his name for everybody it's is the not, craziest. But it's like, but like, I've, like, I say buddy. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's not great, but it's not meat. Meat. Hey, meat. <laughs> Thank God that never caught on. Oh. So. How you doing, meat? Uh, you don't. Mm. Yeah. So the next game is Old Timers Day. So that's where the old they guys come back and play a game oh, before right. the. Oh, right. So Billy anna they announced Billy at that game as the future 1980 manager, and the crowd goes. Crazy. <laughs> Seven minutes standing ovation. Some people are like, what? Hey, that's actually totally insane. This though. is really fucking weird. And it makes no sense to actually be doing that because what? it's not like he's getting another job. So why not just uh, wait and play this one out and see how it goes a little bit? Uh, this is fucking insane, it's right? It's a really strange move. It's why are we applauding? This is crazy. Well, I mean, we're all clapping, but it is very strange. It's I, strange. Beyond fucking strange is you insane. You should not be hiring a guy and then deciding that you're going to bring the guy you fired back in like a year and a half. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. It shows you that he knows he messed up by firing him. Yeah, that's right. Which I don't right. disagree with, but I'd like to see this go through a little bit. But this is fucked up. It's fucking nuts. <laughs> uh, so Reggie asks why he wasn't warned <laughs> Reggie's like hey uh, You know just as a player This seems like you guys don't know what you're doing <laughs> Just from the outside looking in And George told him quote Well I didn't have to Reggie Well Reggie um, here's the deal I'm not doing well lately at this Don't give a shit yeah. Reggie would later call this the worst day of his life Wow really Billy, uh, <laughs> Billy, a good life. Uh, Billy apologizes to George through the press, but he doesn't apologize to Reggie. Right. Now George is a hero too, because right. he brought he Billy brought him back. back. Yeah, but after fire, like it's he's like a, a watch. It's like somehow it's a PR coup. Everyone's happy except for Reggie. Reggie Jackson. Right. But uh, the press is also stupid to be like George Steinbrenner gets it right. So <laughs> he just undid the thing he did. <laughs> Well, reporters are even more stupid because reporters all think Billy's only going to drink beer from now on. Right. It was... The idea that that is in quest... <laughs> Again, it's... I mean, not to circle back on it because I kind of forgot about it, but it is just a crazy stipulation. Yeah. Listen, uh, I need you in top form. Beer only. Only beer. <laughs> low, let it be low and brown. <laughs> Uh, so that night, uh, Billy goes out and parties with Mantle and Ford till 6 a.m. Uh, Mickey um, Mantle really puts yeah. up some numbers oh, yeah. on and off the field. Um, the Yankees win the World Series that year. Wow. So um, It's an awkward 
I mean, you still got another year. The other guy uh-huh. still got another year. Honey, we're going to get divorced in two years, and I'm going to marry <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> no matter how good this goes, Sheila and I are going to end up in two years. That's fair. Yeah, it's just I'm the just, deal I made. I'm happy everybody's happy. I fucked her. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Reggie became known as Mr. October for his playoff heroics. Right. Okay. So that would be because that's when I like I the highlights that I've seen like right probably right around then when he's just fucking cranking. Those yeah, he's home cranking runs. the yeah. home runs in the playoffs. So two months later, he tried Billy, to kill the queen and the naked gun. Too. That's right. Important stuff. So two months later, Billy is in Reno. He's doing an appearance for a basketball coach friend. like a, I think it's a college team or something. But he's like, hey, can you come in and help us? Yeah, he's got like cones with beers. And he's like, now see how many of these you can drink on that cone, kid? Come on. Billy's training you. <laughs> so a young local reporter interviews Billy in a bar. And Billy's shit face. And the reporter asks about a Yankee trade that had happened that day that Billy did not know about. Now, he's not the coach. He's not the coach, but he is the, part of the organization. The coach in waiting. Yes. He is, and, and like probably has some sort of position in the front office or whatever. Future coach. So this really pisses Billy off. Sure. And he tries to get the reporter's notes. He's like grabbing at him and trying to snatch the notes away. Because he regrets that he was so drunk. Because he, no. He's oh, he just hates the information. He, yeah, he's mad. So he thinks. And it's, it's like he's being sandbagged. He's like. Oh, you're surprising me with this. Right, okay. And then he punches the reporter twice in the face. Sure, okay, great. So we're that's two orbital bones away from this yeah, story being nothing. What, that's how you stop an interview yeah, back then. Yeah. The reporter had uh, chipped teeth and uh-huh. a gash above his eye. Mm-hmm. I think all the medical expenses were like 7500 bucks. Okay. People in other countries are like, what are you talking about? That's right. Oh. We, uh, uh, we have a great system where if you get punched in the face, then you... Well, have to pay the hospital. People in this country are also probably like seventy five hundred. Uh, that is an old <laughs> fee, and now that's not what it looks like. Now right. it's way higher. That's so, right. Yeah. Um. So, the battered reporter's face is published in papers across the country. Right. Okay. Charges are filed. Oh, you got the you got the guy. Yeah. He, oh shit. He he has a nice shiner um, in the picture, and um. The uh, George, so the reporter sues him for you know money on top of it all. Face destruction. Face destruction. And George says Billy's fate was up to the trial outcomes. He's like, what happened with the trial? The trials that'll be you know what happens with Billy. So <laughs> there's a lot of f- 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 coach negotiating. trial. I mean, George Steinbrenner is again making it a little weird. Yes, it's completely insane. Um, the uh, oh my goodness, yeah, that got, eyeball he is. Got popped. He, Jeez. He got legitimately popped. Like Dude, his eye looks eye. like a seagull's... Or like a... It's very strange. I'm more, I'm more upset about the mouth. And the, the mouth? The, the mustache, mustache is a bother to begin with. Yeah, the mustache is upsetting. So... So the, the, the negotiators are weird because they don't want to just pay the guy because then it'll make him seem like he's guilty. So they... To, they get the metal expenses paid through the basketball team that had invited him down to like make it like seem like he didn't actually do anything. Sure. And, and then, by the way, this is a good thing for the kids at the camp to hear about. <laughs> you know, you're you're trying to instill some lifelong lessons into these young go getters, and there's they learn about the future That's right. sport and how to be a proper yeah. sportsman yeah. or sportswoman, and um, and it's just nice to know that a guy chipped a reporter's teeth across the street on a blackout. That's right. So one of your coaches. Um, so the basketball team ends up paying his medical expenses, and then Billy's supposed to. The agreement is Billy will apologize at a press conference to the guy, but then Billy's reporter goes up and and says like, "Oh, they agreed on they. Everyone is, says they're sorry and blah blah blah," and then has them shake hands in front of everybody before Billy apologizes. So now that puts the reporter in a really bad situation. He can't be like, "Oh, you say you're going to apologize." Because it looks to everybody like they've shaken hands and made right. it. Right. But one will, I mean, I'm not exactly sure where we're going, but one would assume that Billy would still be like, hey, I owe this guy an apology. But Billy's like, hey, all right. <laughs> Fucking cheated you, you son of a bitch. Well, Billy doesn't think he owes an apology. Right. But yeah. but he agreed. I mean, at first Billy was like, he tried to punch me, but he didn't try to punch me. Right. He threw his eye into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen this guy. 
So uh, that's it. Uh, George afterwards says Billy can sign his new contract. Well, George Steinbrenner feels like a good guy at the helm. <laughs> Yankees are bad again. Uh, and George fires the manager well before 1980. So Billy, so the have to manager win. who won the <laughs> won the World Series is now just like he did, just like he did with Billy. It, it just, works out really well for Steinbrenner, who really was making some crazy calls and yeah. like, oh, thank God we suck. So Billy's back, and uh, he tells right away he's like, Reggie's the key to this team, and Reggie has to be traded. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, he just keeps asking to be traded, and George finally says. Quote, I keep telling Reggie that he should try Billy again. The first time I ate broccoli, I didn't like it. The second time, I didn't like it. Now it's one of my favorite vegetables. What? It's just, I mean, seriously. <laughs> like, I, what, what are we doing here? What? And they call it analogies, and they, uh, this is a very good one. You know, that analogy reminds me of when I was trying to eat shit. Yes. I couldn't do it, mm-hmm. and uh, I no matter how many times I try, it just won't go down. That's right. So Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. Uh, somehow Reggie took this advice and called Billy, and they talked, and then Reggie... Look, Billy, Reggie... you're like broccoli. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I do. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks, Reggie. I, yeah. You'll go down. And you're, you're like a, a salmon. Uh, together we are a weird dinner, but a good one. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, broccoli and salmon. Yeah. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> <laughs> so Reggie comes to play the next day. Um, now, a few months later, August 1st, Thurman Munson died when he crashed his private plane. Okay. And he's Billy's favorite player. That's Billy's. the catcher that was the heartbeat of the team. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. There. Billy's just crushed. Right. Well, so um, is Thurman, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> During a moment of silence, before the next game, Reggie convulsed in tears in right field. Oh Jesus! They had such a weird relationship wait, because I read quotes wait, where but wait, he was why like did he calling do that? him the N word and like who was Thurman Munson and Reggie and so and to his face and then Reggie would be like ha ha like it was all f- so fucking weird to read. Right. I mean, you know, this is the seventies and now it's it's obviously forty years later, or whatever. But it, or fifty years later, right. forty years later. But it's still you read and you're like, wait, what? Like right. I, I don't know. It was just uh, but so he Reggie is creased by the yeah he's upset by it but right. they fucking Thurman Munson hated him I don't know it's just <laughs> it's, it's, I mean they did but, but they on. did win together so who knows what that meant you know the, yeah. these guys are yes all over the fucking maps right um, so the Yankees don't make the playoffs that year because obviously that's tragic uh, Billy's divorce from Gretchen is finalized and he meets Heather Irvalino who is 24 years old and Perfect. she looks 16. Everyone is like oh my god Billy's dating a teenager good like, good just cause I was gonna say just Make it look weirder. Is <laughs> the move now. From the outside, things already look really crazy and not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. This will help. Yeah, let's make it as creepy and this awful as possible. This yeah. will help. Hey, that old drunk guy is dating a teenager. Is that hey, his babysitter? Hey, have you seen the uh, Yankees coach's new girlfriend? Yes, yeah, she's very young. <laughs> uh, they become very serious. In October, he goes to Minnesota to hunt with a friend. Sure. And while he's in a bar... Uh-oh. Never good. This feels like this always sets up poorly for old Billy. A marshmallow salesman starts telling ben at Billy his baseball opinion. How oh, anybody eat a marshmallow? <laughs> How are you, sir? Uh, just uh, curious if you like snacks. Do you like to eat things? I do, yeah. Oh, well, uh, do you like uh, weird consistencies? Uh, yeah, I guess I like Would you say you're open to uncommon luxuries? Yeah, I love uncommon luxury. Now, as far as a snack goes, are you open-minded? Yeah. Why then, sir, allow me to open this briefcase here and show you what I've got. Look at these things. Look at that. Looks like something you'd put on your door to stop it from banging into your wall, right? That's a marshmallow. You've seen these before? Oh, yeah. Well, there's something different about these. What? They come with a curse. A what? No, they don't. They're just regular marshmallows. You want <laughs> hey, to buy one? That, that, no. Well, then, then they have a curse. Why would I buy a marshmallow out of your suitcase? I can you don't have to buy or... one. You buy them in 12s or 24s or 36s. Or you can get a Marshmallow of the Month membership. You could become a Marsh member. You want to be a Marsh member, sir? No. That's where every month we don't know how many marshmallows we're going to send you. Could be none. It's $15 a month. Have you ever sold any marshmallows? Sir, are you in or are you out? I'm out. 
Well, I'm going to have to ask you to reconsider. Have you considered putting those in bags and selling them in bags? Instead uh, of just it's a lot of days? bags. That's a lot of overhead when it comes to the bag budget, which we don't have. Nobody wants loose marshmallows. Well, I mean, it's mixed in with some of my cards and pens because I'm not. What am I going to carry? Two briefcases? Yes. Well, that sounds. Now, now who's great? Now who's sounding crazy? No, these it's are still you. Well, look, sir, just shut the fuck up for a minute and listen to me. Do you have any interest in buying a bunch of these marshmallows? No. I have more in the car. I where? In the car, in the front seat. In the front seat? Yes, sitting there. In a pile? I mean, you know, yeah, yes. There's a bunch of them. Yes, in a pile. Well, I can't put them all in the briefcase with my pens Why and cards. Why aren't they in bags? I don't, <sighs> sir. I'm not going to sit here again and break down the bag budget. All right. I can't believe you've never met a marshmallow salesman before. You're <laughs> acting like that's crazy. It's crazy. It's not. I sell marshmallows. You can just to go to a store and buy them. Why do that when I'm right here offering you a great package? I don't want. I don't want to be around you. I don't. Nobody does. <laughs> Karen left. <laughs> So this marshmallow salesman starts telling Billy his baseball opinions. You know, uh, <laughs> when you sell marshmallows door to door, you have a lot of time to think. And baseball <laughs> captures my thoughts. Including talking about how bad the Yankees were that year. Billy finally, quote, <laughs> Oh, no. Tell you what, Joe, I bet you 500 your penny that I can knock you on your ass. <laughs> and he put $500 on the bar. <laughs> The marshmallow salesman, quote, let's go. What the fuck? <laughs> I love the marshmallow salesman. As they walked out, Billy punched him in the mouth. Oh, Jesus. The hotel police were called. Um, the Billy told, so then the hotel police, like the next day or whatever, told the press that gets out. Billy tells the press. The salesman fell and cut his lip. You know how these marshmallow <laughs> salesmen are? They're always falling. That's why they work in such soft materials. George didn't believe Billy, and he launches an investigation. Uh, Five days later, Billy is fired as Yankees manager. So the tenure was what? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, not weeks? Not No, it's 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 a long time. Oh, okay. they it, he made it into the next season. So oh, okay, he, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. about a season, probably, yeah, or if if Under? maybe less, okay, maybe less, okay, but still, okay. Well, no, it's about a season because it's after. No, I, I mean, don't know. The fact it's, that it's a, a marshmallow salesman's in a bar during the day shows you how good the job was going. I mean, look, that's just what I mean. If you've ever read the the marshmallow salesman chronicles, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, it's very dark. So yeah, so he's fired. He Billy <laughs> Billy is what year is this? This is uh, seventy nine or eighty. A marshmallow salesman. I think it's eighty. So uh, Billy goes back to California to hang out with his family. He's very despondent, very upset, and he's resenting George because right. he had followed all of George's rules. Yeah, he, he only stuck to beer. He got along with Reggie. No problems with the press. No problems with George. You didn't tell me I couldn't whoop a marshmallow salesman's <laughs> ass. You should have put that in the contract. Well, now I know. Don't ruin marshmallow salesmen. So he thinks the fight thing is just a random, unrelated event. It has nothing to do with the Yankees. And he feels I wasn't betrayed. a coach when I beat up the marshmallow salesman. didn't have my salesman. hat on. I didn't have my uniform on. Hey. Plus, if you can't beat up a marshmallow salesman, what are we doing? Honestly, Who are we? we need to get rid of them. Now, the Oakland, 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 the Oakland Athletics are a terrible team, right? They've lost 108 games the last year. Sports writers called them the Oakland Pathetics. Sure. So I'm going to call those sports writers Pathetics. Yes. Um, there's about, they're getting about 3,700 fans at games. Wow. And they're, and they're just like... So you could get a row. They're four years off being one of the best teams of all time. Right. You know, so um, they immediately hire Billy. Two-year contract, $125,000. His wife, I mean his wife, his sister says he's very relaxed and happy again. Because it's his hometown, right? Right. Um, so he told the A's, gets the team together, and he goes, look, you guys, you guys are going to steal home eight times this year. Now, stealing home is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, you'd be lucky if eight, team, eight teams did it in the right. season. Right, right. It's just an insane thing to say. 
he and they told Ricky Henderson, quote, you're going to break Ty Cobb's record for stolen bases in a season. Ricky's brand new in the league, and he's like, but that's fucking crazy. Ricky was born and raised in Oakland. Um, he didn't speak great, so people didn't realize he was a baseball genius. And, and he said to Billy, quote, that's 96 bases, Skip. And Billy said, quote, we don't stop until you've got at least 100. And Billy quickly taught the A's how to rattle opponents like he'd done before. Right. And this is when it became known as Billy Ball. Okay. Um, oh, I thought that was a picture. It's just me. I was like, what's the picture? No, it's very pretty. Thank you. They stole home nine times that season. Stealing home is so hard because, like, if you're going to steal first to second, the pitcher's got, like, you're not in his field of vision. But if you're on third base. Well, the whole idea is there's something called the balk. If right. you balk the so balking is like you don't come to a complete stop when you're pitching and right. then start going again or, right. or you step it's the wrong your, way. Right. There's, uh, there's like a bunch of ways you can balk. But, so you have to be very very strict and regimented when you're pitching. And if you go off a little bit, the play, player gets an extra base. So the whole reason, one of the reasons to do that is to rattle the pitcher so he <clears> might balk. <throat> right. It just fucks with his mind. Like he sees you running, he has to keep his motion the same. Right. But it throws him. Right, right. Like, Whoa. Yeah. So, yeah, so nine times is crazy. They stole home twice in one inning. <laughs> oh, my God. So, hey, so fans are just going, this is just fucking amazing. Right. Like fans are going crazy. Exciting. They're doing hidden ball tricks. They're throwing balls in the dirt to scuff it so the pitcher can then use it to, you know, throw better. They learn how to throw spitballs. R- Ricky is stealing bases like crazy. Game attendance goes up from 3,700 to 12,000. Okay. Ricky, quote, the other team starts grousing and complaining. They're half angry and half embarrassed, and we're smiling. I tell you, it was fun. So they're having a fucking blast. Billy and Ricky have a bond. Uh, Also being from Oakland, he takes care of Ricky, and Ricky's odd. Okay. Ricky's an odd dude. He he calls other players by nicknames. Meat? Not meat, but just everyone he gives a nickname to. And a few of his teammates thought it was because he didn't know their names. Right. That's a good move. That's a good <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to be good with those nicknames. That's a good move. One example is later in his career, he's on a new team. And there's a teammate there that, you know, he just started. And the teammate has a batting helmet on. And he goes. Helmet. It's John Oliver. He goes. He asks him if he always wore the helmet in the field. He does because the guy wears it in the field when he's oh. you know, on defense. And uh, he says. Quote, we had a guy on the Mets last year who did that too. And Oliver Road says, quote, yeah, Ricky, that was me. <laughs> I was your teammate for a whole year. And I wore the helmet. So. <laughs> yeah, that hurts. Ricky once got a. Also, he wore the helmet in the outfield? He had gotten hit in the head. So he, if he got hit in the head again, he would die. So oh, he okay. had to wear. Okay. Um, right, don't make me feel bad. No, it's, you, you really fucking I just was asking a question. No, you're like a marshmallow salesman. Yeah. I got to be honest. Oh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> So, Ricky. Shallows. One time, Ricky got a one million dollar bonus at the end of the season, and after a few months, the team called because the check hadn't been cashed, and Ricky had framed it and put it on his wall. Wow, well, with like a break in case of emergency <laughs> glass or something. I don't know. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. That's like you do that with the one, your first one dollar bill or whatever. Look, he also goes on to be the best leadoff hitter in Major League Baseball history. Right. Like he's amazing. So. Billy hung out at the Danville Hotel in a bar where no one bothered him. Okay. Like, it's his new bottom of the barrel. Yeah, right, right, right. But on the road, the fights with the marshmallow salesman and the young reporter gave him a rep. Right. So before, he was battling Billy who fought on the field and was a tough guy, and now he's known as a drunk bar fighter. Okay. So he was a marked man, just right. like back in the day in Berkeley. Right. Drunks want to take on the most famous bar brawler in America. Yeah. Billy, quote, it would escalate. The guy would say, did you get fired today or why don't you take a swing at me? Come on, you don't look so tough. Billy son, who's older now, Billy son, quote, I watched hundreds of big bruising guys come up to my dad in a bar and say they were going to kick his little ass. I'm telling you, it never stopped. I'm no, I'm no marshmallow salesman, Billy. Why don't you try beating me up? <laughs> I, I mean, I, it is important that we celebrate the marshmallow <laughs> throughout the story and keep his memory alive um, for, yeah, future generations. 
Oh my God. Um, I'm not no marshmallow salesman. It's like, yeah, no one else is. That was the only one ever. There was never another marshmallow salesman. Uh, another uh, quote. I remember one night, the guy sitting next to him just kept flicking his cigarette ashes uh. on Billy's arm and hand. Billy kept asking him to stop, but the guy just stared at him and kept flicking the ashes on him. I saw a guy kick another guy's ass for ashing on him a few times. Yeah. And it was, uh, everyone was like, you are within your rights to do what you're about to do. <laughs> But so he is, as much as he's the brawler, he also holding is holding back. Holding back. Yeah. Like he's not. On the road, fans began to pelt him with marshmallows. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the mar- I mean, ah, the marshmallow guy had to be at home like, that's right, you son <laughs> of a bitch. You beat me up, but I made millions. <laughs> Marshmillions. <laughs> wow. In- but, but. If you're going to have things thrown at you, yeah. there's not a lot of better things I would just than open my, I would just open my mouth. Yeah, right. Around, right, yeah. right. In, I think he's eating all of them. <laughs> in Minnesota, hundreds of people during a loss threw marshmallows at Billy. So they're just... Right. In, but in New York, fans gave him, again, a standing ovation. They still loved him. He was named Manager of the Year for improving the A's record by 29 wins with the exact same players. They didn't wow. get a new player. Crazy. Same team. 29 more wins. Uh, they drew 500,000 more fans. Wow. The A's gave him a five-year contract. Yeah, I was going to say. The next spring training, a British rock star photographer who hung out with the Stones and the Who came to take pictures of the team. <laughs> That's right, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Just not the right vibe for the environment. <laughs> what you got there, you silly little bats and things? Move that out of the way. Come on, everyone. Get on the drummies. Kick a soccer ball. There you are, yeah. Quote, I've been around a lot of crazy shit, but Billy, his coaches, and some of the players, they kept up to that level. It was all alcohol-based. But some of these older guys were serious professional drinkers. Some mornings at the batting cage in spring training with the coaches staying there, it didn't smell like alcohol. It smelled like someone had dumped a quart of Jim Beam on home plate. Wow. So they are just fucking. Wow. What a crazy. What a crazy. I mean, it's just like so counter to what you would think an athletic organ. I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Let's invite impairment into every level of this. (laughs) I mean, that's. Fucking yeah. nuts. So that the A's started that season with a seventeen and one record, and they're drunk. And yeah, and the coaches are, and they're fucking. And then you know, this is Mike Norris, who was on the bees, the coke, guy, uh, coke guy. Okay, and like, right. This is like right. as long as they have some cocaine. I didn't know they had cocaine too. Probably. Time Magazine put Billy on the cover under it, the headline "It's Incredible," so he's on Time Magazine's cover because I mean, it's just you'd just be like, "We need to drink more. <laughs> We're doing so good." <laughs> Can we get IVs? Yeah, it's just vodka and marshmallows. Uh. But in May, Billy was suspended a week for bumping an umpire. Now the umpires union were done with Billy. That's called bumpire, by the Bump-hiring. way. Bumpiring. The umpires union were considering suing Billy for assault. Okay. Another um called Billy, quote, probably the meanest, mo- most unfair man of all on the field. Okay. Now, Heather's living in his house in uh, gated Blackwater with her bl- brother, mother, and father. So uh, well, how can I scream, explain Black? Blackwater is like a crazy fucking rich housing place that is walled off. And it's in the East Bay, and it's, like, just super fucking rich people. Okay. So he's, she's living there uh, with her brother, mother, and grandmother. At his house? And I can't really figure this out. Like, So wait, all, he's, everyone's... He's, okay. he's living there, but he's not. Like, he'd also stay at the hotels. Sure. Like, it, it's it's weird. Okay. Um, it's also July- weird to move in every member of the That is also weird, but she didn't family. want to go without her family. So, and, you know, if you saw... If you saw Black Hawk, you'd be like, all right. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. In July 1980, he meets Jill Gwyver, oh who's boy. a 25-year-old photographer. Oh, dear. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Uh, they're very soon inseparable. Okay. Well, that's going to be a problem because Why? he's- Well, he's separable with someone else right now. I'm so sorry? He's in the separable thing already. He can't be- Yeah, but this is a different person. 
Oh, right. No, I think that's still, my point still stands that um, they should. No, she's a different, so he can be. Yeah, but he's got the one. So you can't be inseparable and carry on two relationships. Oh, well, hold on. Oh. She was his road girlfriend. Well, touche, friend. Continue. (laughs) Billy thought he had better morals than his players who had one night stands on the road. It's disgusting. Get yourself a road wife. He proudly told an A's executive that he only had one woman on the road and one at home. I keep it pretty good where I come from. I'm not looking for any stress or drama. (laughs) The A's made the playoffs. Uh Uh-huh. But then good they, for road wife. Oh, She's they, like, oh, cool, yeah, more right. at a time. But then they lost to the Yankees in four games. Okay. After uh, at the after party, Yankee Greg Nettles decked Reggie Jackson. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they won. <laughs> Reggie's just awful. He's yeah. just fucking awful. Yeah. Billy was now more famous than ever. Sure. Billy Ball was trademarked. Um, the team got, mo- team got most of the profits, but it's trademarked. He had tons of endorsements. Sears wants to now sell a Billy Martin casual wear line. He, oh, my God. He dressed what? in like cowboy. It's clothes. one pant legs off. And, uh, <laughs> okay. It's going to be tons of fucking money. Like this, is, like, this is striking it rich. Right. So Sears sends a private jet to bring him to a meeting at their headquarters. Okay. Unfortunately, the jet had scotch on it, so Billy showed up wasted, and they canceled the deal. Okay, good, 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 good. Smart. <laughs> That's fine. It's okay. He could have used it because in late 1981, the IRS said Billy owed $200,000 in back taxes. What the hell's he... a back tax? <laughs> he you didn't say anything the year it happened. I told you. Remember when I told you I said you have to pay taxes on these checks you're depositing? These they were checks? for commercial no, things. that doesn't matter. I tried to explain this that to you. That wasn't me. I was pretending to be someone else. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. You got money as Billy Martin. All right. Well, look, just tell him I now know. Tell them. Them? Yeah. Who? IRS. Just tell them you know? Now I get it. Right, but you still owe money. Like Bullshit. Pay... They didn't tell me anything. No, they didn't have to. Everybody knows that. It, that's why I told you. I told you. I was like, you got to pay taxes. All right. Tell them this. They owe me money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go at them. <laughs> Uh, so he's very distracted by his money problems. Sure. And he's very distant. Shame they had scotch on that plane, huh? He's, he's very distant in spring training that year. That's good for a coach, right? Yes. He had a trailer outside the left field fence, and he just stayed in it for hours. No, that's time. good. That's how you can coach. Yeah. For sure. Just treat it like a like a tornado uh, unit. That's right. Like a twister van. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the players all feel abandoned. And then that year... Because their coach lives in an RV outside, outside of Outside the field. wall, yeah. yeah. It's not sure. great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the pitchers all start falling apart that year, and they'd been the key to 1981. But now they all, they all had injuries, and people started blaming Billy and the pitching coach for using them too much the year before. Okay. Overusing them. So it, they're saying it's his fault. Right. And, and one day that season, after they lose enough games, Billy comes into his office and just fucking destroys it. Okay, Billy Ball. TV, fridge, desk, wall, wall outlets. machine. Wall, wall outlets, outlets. Toy out of the wow. wall. Like, I mean, he literally destroys the... Okay. They try to fix it overnight sure. so the owners don't find out, but right. the owners find out. Right. And they start thinking Billy's a little unhinged. Why? Because he ruined the office and, and the outlets? Tore even outlets. Right, okay, yeah, right. It's not great. So after this season, they fire him. Okay. Now, in November, Billy's in Manhattan with Jill, and a photographer takes a picture of them standing very close. And it goes in the paper, and Billy flips the fuck out. Sure. And he's like, I got to call Heather. And he calls Heather, and he proposes to her. What the fuck? (laughs) Dudes are just so crazy. Dudes are just crazy. They are crazy. There's no, like, the whole situation is nuts, Mm -hmm. but 
like the level of insanity he gets himself to just being like if she sees it she'll like the fear that the relationship can generate in a guy I'm, like he's completely acting out of fear yeah and it's just a picture where they're not standing like super yeah. far away from each other you could make up any reason yeah he'd, he'd like, or at oh. least let her start it be like hey i saw a picture yeah. in the paper but instead he's like honey look i got something to tell you i have to marry you <laughs> wow <laughs> so they get married in the same month that he proposed in New Orleans, like a couple weeks later, they get married. Okay. Jill is still his road lady, though. Road lady. But she didn't know he got married. Well, of course not. That's not on the road. <clears throat> now, George... George had gone through three managers that year alone. Oh, my God. Are they going to... Yankees finished fifth. No. George hires Billy again as manager <laughs> in January. Wow. Third time. Can't quit him. At the first home game, 55,000 fans cheer. And the sure. marketing campaign is Billy is back. Right. Team, not good. Sure. George had told reporters he wouldn't interfere with the team until halfway through the season. <laughs> he said he wouldn't? That was he his... Said, pre oh. He said, I won't interfere until the... Just when it gets break. important. Then I'll start messing with it. I'm not going to start fucking with anything until, until halfway through. And then I'm going to really just fuck everything Really up. get crazy. So, <laughs> the, uh, in May, he can't, he can't help himself. He doesn't make it to halfway through the season. In May, he goes into the clubhouse and he scolds the team and just tears into them. After he leaves, Billy tells the player to just fucking ignore him, and right. the players all laugh. On July 24th, the Yankees are playing the Kansas City Royals, and their best player, George Brett, hits a game-winning home run in the final at bat. Okay. And the entire team is celebrating. And as they are, Billy strolls out to the umpire at home plate and asks him to check the bat to see if it was illegal. So players could put something called pine tar on the bats. On the bat. So the hand, the hand where you're right, handling right. Yeah, it. Yeah, a grip. Sticky. Right. And uh, it couldn't be above 18 inches because they didn't want pine tar getting on the ball right. when it was hit. Right. So Billy's request is not really what it's intended for. It's not about hitting it. It's about pine tar. It's about pine tar. So you would normally be like, hey, it's getting sticky stuff on the ball. When Billy makes his request, Brett yells from the dugout, quote, if they call me out, you're going to see four dead umpires. Jesus, Brett. Learn how to talk shit. <laughs> we don't get there right away. Straight to murder. Yeah, it's just like uh, early aggressive. Uh, be open. And they call him out. Wow, okay. Brett, because of the pine tar. Yeah. Brett loses his fucking mind. Well, he better be killing four umpires, otherwise he doesn't hold to his word. Yeah. And he storms out of the dugout like a madman to try to get at the umpire. Another umpire has to grab him by the neck to hold him back. I mean, he is... Jesus Christ. <laughs> he's a fucking madman. Okay. Now, the Yankees finish. That's that's one of the biggest moments in baseball history. Like, everyone knows that moment. Um yeah, but they just know George Brett. No one, it, no one realizes it, that on the other side of it is Billy Martin being his little fucking genius. Right. You know. Is that why? Right. Is it famous just because it's bullshit? It's famous because of Bar George Brett's reaction. Oh, okay. Right. Going crazy. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There is trying okay. to kill the umpire. Yeah. No. There's definitely. <laughs> I like the way that the, I like the guy in Look third. Look at the lady down there. Just yay. Yeah. But it's also there's one, two, three. They're standing on a line. Like, don't worry, we'll defend him in a line. Yeah. So the Yankees finished that season 91 and 71, which is a really fucking great record, but not enough for the playoffs back right. then. Um, and then George fired him. Sure. <laughs> sure. <Just> whatever. <laughs> well, he didn't fire him. He replaced him with Yogi Berra, but he made sure everyone knew Billy wasn't fired, just moved to a new position, advisor for trades and personnel. Quote, <laughs> I don't like to talk about firing managers. I don't fire them. I, I rehouse them. I... <laughs> Yeah, so he's very, after the past time, uh, times of firing Billy, he really doesn't want to get right. into it. And so he's like, no, I did. I, he's, he's not fired. He's, he's new hired. He's just not there. He's different job. He's in another office with another nameplate. At the beginning of the next season, Jill's on a plane when a Yankee wife asked her, quote, so what are you doing now that Billy's married? And that's how Jill found out Billy was married. I can't believe that. <laughs> that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? She goes back to Newport Beach 
and Billy flies there and they get into a huge fight on her lawn. And the cops are called and Billy is arrested for public public drunkenness and disorderly conduct. Okay, good. So now his wife, Heather? Yes. Well, the New York Times headline, quote, Martin jailed as drunk. <laughs> the papers were harsher than they had ever been before because new younger reporters didn't understand why Billy hadn't always been reported on as a drunk asshole. Right. So there's this change in culture, media right. and culture. And they're like, what the fuck? You, what's with this drunk guy that yeah. you're all, you know, acting like he's awesome. He just drinks beer. <laughs> Whatever it's so worked up about. I don't know why, but one, one, I think it was the AP reported that they had fought over a horse. And that must have been to cover for him because hmm. they would cover for ball players back sure. then. Sure. They fought over a horse. They had a horse fight. <laughs> just, come on. That happens. Billy told Jill he was going to leave Heather. And in a year they did. They divorced. Um, Jill. Look, and- I want you to get your stuff and get out of here. And that goes for your mom, your dad, and your grandma, too. Whoops. <laughs> so crazy. Jill and Billy became closer, but his friends and family did not like Jill. Okay. Nobody liked Jill. Sure. They felt like Jill pushed them all away from Billy. Okay. She didn't approve of his drinking outings with his buddies, and she didn't like the hunting trips. So. <laughs> I like that the family's like, you're trying to change him. It's like, he's a full-on alcoholic. <laughs> he's been has a drinking problem. Like, quit trying to take the Billy out of Billy. The next season, the Yankees start 6-10, and 10, and Yogi Berra was fired, and Jeez. Billy was named manager of the so New York I, I did not know that George Steinbrenner was, like, this crazy. Like, I knew he was crazy. I've enjoyed Seinfeld and this Steinbrenner impression and been like, yeah, he's nuts. I mean, it seemed nuts, but this is nuts. This is like a guy who's like, how do you get famous from firing people? I know how. I mean, he's really out of his fucking mind. It's crazy. That, like, I mean, you just give a guy, like, 11 games and then be like, nah, you're done. Yeah. I mean, it just, and how many times can you fire and hire the same fucking guy? Yeah. You know, I should hire. Don't say Billy. 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 But now fans weren't happy because of how Yogi Bear was fired. You don't fire guys yeah. 16 games into a fucking season. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. There's 162 fucking games. Yeah. <laughs> also, they were like, how many times is Billy going to get hired? People. People are disgusted with how George runs the team. And for the first time, when Billy was announced, it was just a quick ovation. And also, for the first time, some Ooh, random booing. Yeah, okay. Late that season, they're in a race to win the division. And it's like, this is like 10 days of maybe the worst 10 days in Yankee history. <laughs> so they have a bad series against the top team. And then George shows up in the press box the next game. And he starts reading the stats of several Yankees from that series that didn't do well. Reading where? Of his play. In the press box with all the press. Okay. Griffey, 0 for 8. Baylor, 0 for 7. Winfield, 3 for 11. Quote, where is Reggie Reggie Jackson? We need a Mr. October or a Mr. September. Winfield is Mr. May. The big guys are not coming through. The guys who are supposed to carry the team are not carrying the team. Good. So good. Good. So that's that's how you run a team. Yes. This became known as George's Mr. May speech. <laughs> For some reason, the team is fucking pissed. What happened? What, I they don't know. Didn't like the I idea that know. he's just shitting on the personnel to the people who write about it. And particularly Dave Winfield, because Dave Winfield is a guy who would just like run full force into the fence to catch the ball. Right. Like he just gave it his all. Right. And he went three for eleven, which isn't fucking terrible. Right, like that's yeah. like three for that's like a good that's a good series. Right. Um. So. The next day, George said, quote, if they're not embarrassed, they should take the uniform off and walk away from the pay window. Okay. So he doubled down. Yankees are more pissed. A couple days later, Billy asks a right-handed batter to hit left-handed. The guy had, been, the guy had never hit left-handed before, but he started practicing trying to hit left-handed, and so Billy was like, hit left-handed. He strikes out. They lose that game, and people think Billy's gone absolutely fucking crazy. Yeah. Now the Yankees have lost six. The Yankees have lost lost six in a row, and they were in contention to win the division. And then there's this pitcher on the team that no one likes. He's a redneck guy named Ed Whitson. The players hate Ed. The fans hate Ed. 
he's, you know, the fans jeer at him and boo at him. Like, nobody fucking likes Ed. He's so bad under pressure. So <laughs> they're in this six-game losing streak, and Billy's like, I cannot have fucking Ed Whitson pitch. So he... Hey, Billy, am I starting today? <laughs> um, I feel good. I just got to get a couple pitches out to just get my arm loose, and then I'll be ready. <sighs> There's water out there, right? Or can I call for... There's no water. Oh, boy. Marshmallows. Oh. We have a contract. I understand. I respect it. Um, so Billy tells, instead of just saying he's not good at, under pressure, Billy says, well, his arms hurt. Okay. So then the press goes to ask Ed, and Ed's like, no, my ar arm's not fucking hurt. Huh. My arm's fine. My ego's killing me. Yeah, and now Ed's fucking furious. So after the game, the players are at a, if you can imagine, at a bar? No, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, Why? First time. What happened? At a bar. First time at a bar. Charity stuff? Quote, Whitson was agitated and talking loudly about Billy Martin. And then Whitson starts arguing with a guy at a table next to him. Okay. Just some random dude. Sure. And they get into it, and they stand up, and they get in each other's faces. And Ed grabs him by the throat. Now, Ed knows martial arts. Okay. So he grabs the guy by the throat. They always say you're not supposed to use that unless you're drunk. That's right. And Billy comes running over to stop it. Let me beat his ass. And he gets in between them, and he says, quote, Eddie, you're drunk. You don't need this. And then e Eddie called Billy a motherfucker and punched him. Mm -hmm. For Billy, this must have been very strange. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's me normally. So now they start fighting. Okay. And sports writers are there watching and just taking notes. First thing I'd try to do is hurt his arm to be like, told ya. <laughs> See? You can't bend it. Ed is out of his fucking mind, screaming, throwing punches. They get separated, and they lead them through the lobby to take them up to their separate rooms. <laughs> it's pretty amazing that one's the coach. <laughs> now, Ed's so crazy that they have, his, they have his arms pinned to his side as they walk him. Okay. But he breaks free, and he kicks Billy in the balls so hard oh. it lifts Billy off the ground. Oh, my God. What? No. This is like Mel Brooks. Like, this is... I mean, that's possible? Yeah. To kick a guy's ball so hard he flies? <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> oh, my God. Billy, <gasps> Billy crumples to the ground. Ow. And then he stands up, and he takes Spits a... Spits his nuts out? He takes a deep breath. And he looks at Ed, and he says, quote, Now I'm going to have to kill you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, my God. I mean, if a guy kicks your nuts so hard, you go off the ground. You have to come back with some heat. He knows. He knows you got a counter punch. Now I'm afraid I'm going to have to kill you. You understand? Ed is pushed out of the lobby as Billy comes after him. <laughs> so the way this is described, it is described like a crazy mon monkey dodging everybody who tries to block him. Billy. Like, yeah. Billy is now... People are trying to keep him blocked. See, there and he's are some like, people ping, ping, who ping, would ping. rumble at the pain of no. the ball kick, but Billy, Billy is, somehow he got harnesses and he takes yeah. the fire into his belly yeah. and his fists, and now he needs to just he's get like, it out. That's somehow. what makes me strong! <laughs> kick him again! <laughs> so, so he's just dodging and faking and weaving, and... He gets past the last guy. Oh, my God. And now there's a group of players who are surrounding Ed trying to move him away. And Billy rushes at the group. And they start trying to punch each other over everybody. And then everybody falls over in a giant pile. Billy hits his head on the ground. The back of his head hits the pavement. And so he's dazed. So they grab Billy and take him back to the lobby. They take Ed over to the parking lot. And then they take Billy to, a, Billy, Billy to a back elevator. And they take him up to the third floor. And as the doors open, the other guys have no. got Ed right there. Hey, we we're just going to put Ed in here. Oh, shit. <laughs> Round four. No, more? So, yeah. So they go at each other again. And... Uh, and they finally get him separated for the, 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 the all the fighting, 25 minutes. Oh, my God. And an elevator ride. And an elevator ride. George hears about it the next morning. 
I'm going to hire Eddie to be the new manager. <laughs> How do you think about that, everybody? George. <laughs> Billy has uh, a broken arm, cuts on his face, and back. Before the game, reporters asked Billy what happened to his arm. Quote, I heard it bowling. Mm -hmm. You know how bowling is. Those pins shatter. So George conducts another investigation. Oh, <laughs> good. And then he announces neither guy's going to be punished. Okay, George. Nobody, this one was fine. Sure, George. Whatever you want to do. He's like, Billy wasn't looking for a fight. He was trying to stop a fight. And But I don't know why he doesn't punish Ed. Uh -huh. Ed hit him first. Ed was going to fight with another. Sure. Well, here's the reason. Because he's not really mad about the fight. He likes it. Well, he had set a curfew for 12 p.m. And he's now furious that the players were Out drinking in the bar after midnight. Okay. George, <laughs> you do you, baby. You do you. For the rest of his life, Ed never spoke of the fight. Okay. Wow. Oh, Jesus. The Yankees did not make the playoffs, but again, they finished 97 and 64. Again. Here's a Billy Amazing record. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, so he's got a broken arm there. Good Lord. And look how old he looks. Like yeah, he's, he's an old guy. And look at the Dan Aykroyd cop behind him. That guy's not uh, enforcing <laughs> much. Certainly not. So, look, that's an amazing record. Uh, still not enough to make the playoffs because somebody was better. But everyone's excited about the next season. You know, like we finished sure, people are optimistic. Yeah. Billy gives, uh, I guess it was tradition for at the last game for the, the manager to give a summary of the season in front of the players and reporters. Okay. So he did. And during that, he says he wants a race. He wants a race? Yeah, during the, he, he explains how the summary of the season, how great it went, and then he says, I want a race. So I got fired before. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Turns out the IRS had put a lien on his salary. Oh, a raise. Raise, yeah. Okay. What would you think I said? Race. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. He wants to race Ed Whitson. Okay, good. That's, <laughs> that's how the sausage race is started at County Stadium. Um, okay. Rumors quickly start that ex-Yankee Lou Pinello would replace him. Now, Billy does not go back to Heather after the season or even talk to her. He okay. just... Stops. She'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, this, this whole thing of having to communicate the end, it's not necessary. People figure it out. True. If you just go away forever, yeah. she'll figure it out. How hard can it be? She's what? She doesn't have the power of deduction. She'll notice. She files for a divorce. The court papers... The divorce court papers said he did not come home after the 1985 season. Yeah, and she and what happened? She got she it. She figured it Message out. Message received. She figured it out. And Lou Pinello was made the new manager. Okay. And then fired nine days into well, the season. This, this is the craziest they hired one. Hired a parrot. It must have just been because he asked for a raise because he 97 and 64 is an amazing record. Well, I mean. He is did. It, he uh, did get into a fight with it. Yeah, he had like a Family Guy fight with one of the players. <laughs> so it's sort of like, you know, I mean, I don't know. So uh, Pinello's new manager, Billy, is not fired. He has moved to baseball assistant to George, which is a totally oh, a vague, made-up job. That's a great it's job. A now, you can ever, be, now you can work for him directly. It's literally never you been. You can glean all the information that Steinbrenner doesn't have off of it. It's just a totally. Not real thing. Yeah. Papers are now using Roman numerals for Billy's manager stints. <laughs> Billy uh, IV was over. Is it IV or 1V? Well, that would, yeah, sure. Uh, but George gave Billy a big raise and wiped out a loan that he had given him $150,000. So he's still like taking right. care of him. Yeah, it's weird. Billy and Jill got engaged. Okay. Friends and family were very upset. Sure. She took over his finances. She worked as PR. The next season, the Yankees had a Billy Martin day, and they retired his number. Until number they rehired him later that That's afternoon. Right. His family came uh, to Yankee Stadium for the first and only time, and while they were there, they fought with Jill for the entire that's time. That's crazy. That's the first time they've ever been there. Isn't that? Yeah, that's really weird. Um, Billy said to the fans, quote, I may not have been the best Yankee to put on the pinstripes, but I am the proudest. That's like a huge quote that yeah. people say so his divorce from heather's finalized his drinking eases up a bit he has a very quiet season and then in october george announces billy is back as manager and <laughs> Dude, he retired his number he retired his number <laughs> How, you know what I mean? He retired his number. 
<laughs> You'll coach under a different number, god damn it. <laughs> wow. Five. V. <sighs> Billy Martin, Yankees. <sighs> uh, v. Five. That's crazy. Uh, this time I think we'll figure out if he's right or not. And, and not over like 20 years. Like, no. This is like just <laughs> five, five years. Five years. <laughs> so... Uh, Pinella has moved to GM. Uh, and then Pinella's the G's. Like Steimer is like, that's what we need. He'll be the GM instead. That's better. And I'll be my own assistant, goddammit. Billy marries Jill at a huge wedding. The night before the wedding, his friends try to talk him out of marrying her. That's always nice. His... That's my favorite part of a wedding. The night before when you try to get the guy to bail. Don't fucking do this, don't man. Don't do it, Todd. She's, dude, she, she, don't she do is it. psycho, bro. Right, it's not She's even, psycho. I just don't want to lose you. Yeah, what the fuck, man? It's been nice to see everybody, but come on. Um, so on May 6th, they played a game in Texas. And afterwards, Billy, Mickey Mantle, and a couple other guys. That's good. But already, I got a good feeling. <laughs> got a good <laughs> feeling. Go out drinking. I got a good feeling. They end up at a strip club called uh -huh. Lace. Lace. Nice. Mickey gets so drunk that the other two guys have to escort him home. I can't walk. <laughs> okay. Billy was left there. Billy was never supposed to be left alone. Oh, God. This is a manager. <laughs> <laughs> he should be very comfortable alone. So he's taking a leak in the bathroom, and he's at the urinal. That's good, at least. Two guys come in, and one hits him on the head with something. Okay. Probably a blackjack. Like they hit him with something really fucking hard. Quote, okay. I've never been jumped like that before. I was still standing there peeing. I had my deal still out. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted a raise. <laughs> so he's knocked down, just kicked and punched, and then they, they drag him out the back door, and okay. they take his head. Oh, Jesus. And they drag it across the jagged stucco wall of the building oh, outside. Oh, my God. Quote, the ear was all but sheared off. Oh, my God. They stuccoed his ear off? Yeah. Jesus Christ. At the hotel, <laughs> the Yankee crew, the players, the team, organized, there's a bunch of people there. And someone pulled the fire alarm, so everyone's outside. Okay. The hotel. By the way, shout out to the prankster. Good one. <laughs> always, always a great prank. George is in a silk robe. Of course. <laughs> yes, yeah. He should look like a worm. <laughs> a cab rolls up. Billy rolls out, covered in blood, holding a jacket to his just bloody ear stump hey, me. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So George is like, oh, okay, this is good. Yeah. So everyone, my like, ear's coming in another ride. That's why I hired you. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. We'll what? talk later. We'll talk later. Ta later. Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. They take him to Arlington Hospital. He needs 50 stitches. He has a swollen eye, a gash on his cheek, huge bruises, the ear, contusion on the back of his skull. Like he's really fucked up. Yeah. Billy told reporters, quote, I just feel embarrassed because I got caught off guard. I didn't think I'd get hit in the head in the toilet. It's fair. Fair. It's fair. Fair. They're, they're, that's like holy ground. Like you, shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be able to attack a guy at a urinal. No. It's true. The police said Billy did absolutely nothing to provoke it. George said he was the victim. But we're firing him anyway. <laughs> that's it for you, my Because it's great because I'm crazy. <laughs> the next day, Billy's in the dugout. The players are amazed and horrified. Right. One of them said, quote, he was really messed up this time. There was blood caked in his ear and along the stitches. It was kind of scary. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, Skip Frankenstein. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Blood cake. The blood cake. Like, that's the, here's the deal. Wash it. Uh, well, until, you're, until it's coming out from being able to wash or, you know, time, then you can go back. It's not the time to be oh, working yeah, if you have the dried blood. I, I think back then you couldn't get stitches wet, right? Probably. That yeah. would not surprise yeah. me. By the way, what a great face. Oh. Don't let these get wet. <laughs> it, feels like, it feels like a movie plot now. <laughs> so they go back to New York, and reporters are fucking horrified by his appearance. Sure. And the fact that it happened in a strip club made it all worse. Right, yeah. His rep takes another big hit. George, quote, he's a 60-year-old man, oh, and when I saw his ear was hanging... 
He shouldn't have been there. He has to use better judgment. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that is, it's weird. It's not a good look. So a little while after this, they're in Oakland, and the ump makes a bad call, and Billy charges out. Rips his ear off and throws it at him. <laughs> Take that, you son of a bitch! <laughs> he charges out and he tries to throw dirt on him, but that it's hard clay. So he gets down. I'm going to make him a vase. <laughs> he gets down on the ground. And he tries, oh, I've seen this. And he tries to shovel it right. onto his, and it just looks... Weird. It's embarrassing. Yeah. It looks it's like a kid in a sandbox. You can't like get enough dirt and it's right. just it's it's weird and sad. Right. Writers are not kind. The New York Times asked sports psychologists for opinions of oh, Billy's oh, God. display in Oakland. One quote, dirt adds another quality, filth, ultimately meaning contempt. It's an expression of contempt. So they're just yeah, no shit. You need a PhD. I, and what he's expressing here is displeasure. Uh, he the, the dirt adds an element. He's basically essentially consciously, unconsciously saying to the officiant that he does not believe in what he is saying is law. And he's doing that by uh, analogizing the soil uh, to the consistency of the calls. Um, so it's nuanced. It's difficult to read. It's, it's a bit like a Rosetta Stone situation. No, it's very obvious. But he was kicking dirt on him. He, he is telling him through no. action, the no. dirt is my expression Stop. of displeasure, which is you're, strong. You're a professional? Which is, absolutely. I paid a lot of money, which is why I am forming this uh, sort of triangulation here of the clay um, near your appendages. It's my way of saying this is a roadblock. I'm not into this. It is dirty. It is filthy. It is below me. Um, and he's sort of, we've never has, seen has anything any, quite like has it anybody before. anybody tried to kill but, you? Oh, ever? yeah, yes, absolutely. I used yeah. to sell marshmallows. But so, and we've, we've made it into this mm -hmm. pile, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an objection, um, but it's also a, a way of sending a message uh, discounting the opinion. And, um, and I, is, I would like to die. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's uh, that's how that's how the efficient probably felt at at, at the moment. Um, but it's very nuanced. Again, and not a layman is not going to be a wakey wakey. A layman is not going to be able to uh, pick up on something like this. It's good thing you brought me in for that. So that'll be eight hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Please. Billy was suspended for three games, and the umpires were pissed. They wanted a lot more. Sure. The umpires union said Billy wouldn't be allowed to leave the dugout. Quote, he's <laughs> I like their legal. They're like, we technically have jurisdiction over the field. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Quote, he's going to have to fold his hands, shut his mouth, and that's it. Otherwise, he's going to be ejected, 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 ejected. Every time for the next couple of weeks that he comes that is, out of the dugout, he'll be ejected. This is the weakest threat. <clears throat> He better follow the rules. And if he, we're going to give him a couple of weeks where he has to. So they ejected him every time he came out of the dugout. So he's still coming out. He essentially can't do his job. Right. <clears throat> I mean, the manager has to come out of the dugout. Like, he can't usually. Does he? Yeah, there's times you have to go out to the pitcher. Sometimes. And, like, but I always yeah. feel like those are bullshit conversations. I mean, essentially, he's going like, you think he can still do it? And the guy's like, yeah. And he's like, no, I don't think he can. Get out of here. <laughs> <clears throat> so now, because the umpires are riding Billy... George starts taking shots at Billy again. Right. Of course. George. <laughs> and the team's doing well. The team's right. doing that well. Is, that's irrelevant. George is just. George, it turns out, is upset <laughs> because he ordered the pitchers to do a specific training program every day, but then the team ignored it. Right. Because, again, he has no connection to athletics. N and no understanding of reality. Right. So he, <laughs> he goes to Pinella and he goes, I'm going to hire... I'm going to get rid of Billy again. Can you be coach? And Pennell's like, I don't want to be like Billy. You keep hiring and rehiring. No, no, me. then he'll be the GM. But then then he's like, well, then I'm going to order this. I'm going to hire this guy who's outside the Yankees organization. And Pennell's like, oh, you can't hire an, a non-Yankee. Yeah, it's not how. No, 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 no. That's, um, I don't even know how that would work. <laughs> <laughs> What's that going to look like? So Pennell takes the job and George is fired as Yankee. And, yeah. and um, Billy is fired. Billy's fired. Right. Sorry, Billy's fired. Yeah, it's the 15th Yankee manager in 15 years. Wow, that is something. And they've won a lot of championships. And they, their record, they have these 97, 91 wins. Like they, right. Those are crazy good seasons right. for a baseball team. Billy didn't hear about it from George. His lawyer sure. called him. Right, right. He's in shock, as are the fans, because the team was fucking doing well. They had a 40-28 and 28 record. Wow. 
fourth best in Major League Baseball. Fans Theory. attack George on yeah. talk radio. I think George is maybe just is a fetishist and he just <laughs> enjoys this. Other people, however, say Billy needs rehab, right? Yeah. They're like, well, this guy needs help. Most are worried about him. George George still keeps him on the Yankee payroll. He's still got a position, advisor sure, or whatever. Right. So he goes in and meets with George a month later. George is very remorseful, but probably because the Yankees were not, they immediately were bad as soon as he was not manager. D- they were Dave, not good. Dave, he, he better not be fucking hiring what? No, again. no, it's no. <laughs> well, mean, how could that happen? <laughs> Dude, don't. How could that? I mean, he's about to hire him again. George gives him a raise. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you deserve more money for not really being around. So, uh, Billy and Jill moved to a farm in upstate New York. They uh, they installed the twenty four karat gold plated urinal in the bathroom because Billy missed the toilet so often late at night. Well, he's probably looking for people to be hammering him in the head every time he goes now. <laughs> he's got bathroom PTSD. Yeah, yeah. He's got P T S D. Well done. They had a sheep, a ram, geese, ducks. Billy putters around on a tractor. Jilly walls off Billy completely from his family, his friends. Okay. Yankees finish in fifth place. Okay. But he's living a small town life, and sure. he's he's liking it. Right. He goes and does an occasional appearance. Yeah, and sure, every now and then he'd go like murder a stranger in the woods or something <laughs> just to get the feeling again. He's still a team advisor. He talks to George on the phone. George fires Lou Pinella and hires Dallas Green, who's okay. the out, who's the outsider. Okay, right, right. That, that they were worried about. Right, and he's terrible. Okay, he fires Green and hires Bucky Dent. It's, it's nice to see him play the field a little bit. <laughs> like, no, there's other talent out there. Billy begs him for a more active role on the team. He goes, "I want to do more. I want to do." You're more. starting pitcher, Billy. <laughs> So George's idea is to put Billy in a uniform and just have him around. It's uh, this is a mascot. Even if it's hanging out in the owner's box. What sort of weird? You're gonna pretend to be you ten years ago. What sort of weird? Well, a lot of people think it was George's idea of having a manager in waiting for a split decision firing. Oh my God, he has like a like how some people hide cigarettes. <laughs> The manager in the wings. I don't know. I might have to fire at Pinella. Now managing the New York Yankees for the rest of the game. In late November, after the season's over, George and Billy talk in his office. George has a giant mitt chair, and he he makes people sit in it because it makes them look really small. Okay, so let me know if he's a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> they talk in his office, then they walk You're down. You're a the- ball. <laughs> Do you understand? You're out. Do you get it? Yeah. You're tiny. No, I get it. You're in a little mitt. I, yeah. Look no, at the size I, of me. You're Big a, man. Yeah, you're in a small chair. You're yeah. a little ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Your insides are like string and stuffing. Okay. You're expendable. Is, this, is there a point to this meeting? Yes, of course. You're a little ball. Okay. So tiny. All right, I'm going to go. Nope. Get out, get, get, get back. That guy's gone. <laughs> Your little ball. <laughs> okay. So they talk in his office and then they go down to the field and then talk some more. And then they shake hands and the secret's out. He, Billy V1 is here. No, oh my God. Billy I, Six is coming. If, this is, if, if it outdoes Rockies, it's a problem. He's calling... He's calling the coaches. It's uh, like it's he's like hire. they're in love. Yeah, it's really crazy. And they just can't quit. They just can't stop it. They can't. Um, <laughs> he's Plan B for the 1990 Yankee season. 1990. Then um, his mom dies. Okay. And he is fucking devastated. Okay. Inconsolable. A childhood friend quote. He kept saying, "I'll never be the same." His friend Bill Reedy, who's now his closest friend, comes up to the farm to hang out. You know, my mom died. Come mm-hmm. and hang out with me. And they head out. Uh, they go out to town on Christmas Day and end up drinking at Maury's, the local bar. Sure. Billy was hitting the vodka hard. The, the, for some reason, the bartender there was an ex-baseball player. It's just all so crazy. Okay. What? Like cheers. Yeah, like cheers. That's right. Yeah. 
Uh, he's he's very he's just talking about spring training. He's just fucking thrilled about spring training starting. They Billy leave, is. Yeah, you know he's going to be a manager. Yeah. They leave the bar. Reedy's driving. The pickup truck is going too fast for the icy road and slides into a ditch. And Billy's neck was broken. Oh shit. He died on Christmas Day, nineteen eighty nine. Jill called his son, his daughter, and then George in that order. Wow. The IRS. George is like, I'm not going to fire him. (laughs) I think he can still coach this year. What do you think? The IRS quickly attached a lien on his estate for unpaid back taxes. So nice. He would have lived if he had been wearing a seatbelt. Wow. Thousands came to his funeral. St. Patrick's fucking packed, like more people than are supposed to be in there. Street outside, thousands of people. All these guys, he really meant something to, uh, like a guy named Bob Presario that came from New Jersey. Quote, I was a fan of Billy all my life. He stood up for the little guy, one of us. That's why we're all here. Also a very diverse crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, on June 6th, Bucky Dent was fired as manager of the Yankees. <laughs> we're hiring Jill. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> we are going to actually employ Billy's ear. We found it. Cyberder died on July 13th, 2010. Wow. That is quite a... Uh... Isn't that fucking crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. That's whole, that whole life is crazy. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like Kill Bills. The second one is very different, but it's still totally crazy. Yeah. Uh, there is, there's the whole lead thing. What? Um, leaded gasoline made people more violent and, right. and crazy. And I, this is Billy was drinking it, right? I mean, look, Billy grew up in a really rough time. His mom's a you know a yeah. street sex worker, and that's that's going to lead to that's going to lead some fist fights alone, right? But you know, you're raised by she's probably an alcoholic, I would imagine, right? Um, so. He has a temper problem, but uh, but then he's the guy who cries. Yeah, and everybody everybody loves him. His fucking teams love him, except yeah. for the occasional Reggie Jackson. But they everybody loves Billy. The other managers who work on him work on him are like he's the smartest manager that's ever lived. Right. Crazy. But he's so fucking volatile. Yeah. No, but I mean, there are like, I mean, there are. Like the whole, I mean, even players or athletes, like part of the thing sometimes is, you know, finding the way to harness the talent and focus it because it's just scattered. Yeah. And so it's like with someone like this, like the passion is what's getting your players motivated and is what's like working your system. But it's also the guy who's going to fucking chip a reporter's tooth at a bar that he's blackout drunk at. Like, yeah, it's It's good and bad, you know, and you kind of just have to, if you're the manager too, Especially his situation with Steinbrenner. It's like nobody's going to give you baby corrections. Like they're just letting him do whatever. And so, you know, he's an old dog, no new tricks really. And so he just, but yeah. It's really. It's crazy. It's a fucked up. It's also such a fucked up time. Although, you know, we obviously live in a fucked up time now. What? But people were so much, the, the fights. The alcohol, too. I mean, that the level of alcoholism, did, but right? Did, but kids don't seem to fight as much as we did when we were... Like, people would brawl all the time. And, yeah. and I talk to kids now, and it's not a thing like it was. I, I mean, I, I'll bet you that the, you know, the idea... Like, it's like road raging. Like, you used to be able to talk shit when you were driving to people. Yeah. Like, you used to be able to. You know, you hit a guy uh, with your car on purpose. You deserved it. But um, but you used to be able to, like, you know, be like, hey, you fucked up back there. But now it's like, the, like that. Le- now people are like, I'll kill you. You know, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay, never mind. Shouldn't do that. So maybe there's some version of that. Like, there is. Maybe. But, you know, I don't know. I think that society was much more violent back then. Yeah. But also Drunk. Drunk. Well, that and that's the other thing, you know. They 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 drank in the dugout. Yeah. I mean, not the dugout, in the clubhouse, and everyone was drinking up in the press box. Yeah. And then, you know, in the seventies came around, and they were all doing f- fucking speed. I yeah. mean, there was bowls of speed, and, and like were, that was helping them get more drunk. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was just. Yeah. I mean, they were using system. speed to sober up, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And now, like, the thing most guys seem to be doing is smoking a little bit of pot. You know. How dare they? Yeah. Fuck yeah. that. There's opiates to get hooked on. <laughs> 
That's right. Um, yeah. No, but um, no, it's like when you used to see coaches smoke on the sideline. Now you're like, what the fuck is going on? It's just insane. Or players are smoking. I mean, it's and just they used crazy. To, they, I don't think you, you can't chew tobacco anymore, but those guys no. just all had big wads of oh, tobacco, yeah, tobacco in their mouth. Yeah. No, no. It, I mean, the the line between like athlete and regular human was so much more blurred. <laughs> now you're like, oh, they're a different species of human. But back then, you're like, hey, this guy's uh, this guy like uh, also uh, runs a Zamboni company, <laughs> like you know, just like uh, he, actual humans. Um, yeah, alcoholism. But yeah what alcoholism a, uh, is cool, huh? Alcoholism is pretty cool. You've enjoyed growing up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. They call me. They call me fan number one. No, they, I mean, they, my, my grandfather was like a huge, huge alcoholic. And my brother, when he tells me stories, he's like, he was fun, but he was shit faced. Yeah. You know, like, but that's just how it was. It wasn't a regular to be like drinking at lunch. Like every no. lunch, you'd have drinks, and that yeah. would not be crazy. You'd like, not if you all. go out with someone now and you order drinks, people are like, is everything cool? What's <laughs> like, did we talk about Like, you would need to be predetermined that you're getting day drunk. Yeah. You didn't just show yeah, up yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh, three gin martinis. <laughs> I gotta go back to the office. I'll drive there. I'm not driving back to the office, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy. Um, well, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, there we go. Finally. I've, I've always wanted I've always wanted to hear the opposing coach's experience on Ten Cent Beer Night. So it's nice <laughs> to contextualize that world a little bit for me. Uh, I should read the sources. Oh yeah. Yeah. And when you do it, say a source is a source, of course. A source is a source, of course, of course. A source is a source, of course. Uh, main book uh, by Bill Penning, Pe Bill Main Source is a book by Bill Pennington, Billy Martin, Baseball's Flawed Genius. Uh, there's also some New York Times articles uh, and then a meeting article uh, called Billy Brawl, but that one is very pro Reggie and it doesn't really hold weight, hmm. <laughs> but there's some stuff in there. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Well. That's there you go. There's there's there is everybody. Hmm? There you go. So signing off. This is, what? To catch you on the flip side. <laughs> cut it, Eric. Cut the fucking thing cut now. The, cut it. Cut it. Cut. Oh my god, you blew that at the end, Dave. God, did you?